And it will be Ireland to get us underway, kicking off from right to left. The gold for Australia. We mentioned Sharni Williams, we mentioned Shannon Paddy, Parry, and uh, so much experience in those guys. But uh, Lindsay Peets and her team know exactly what is expected of them here, and that is qualification for the semi finals. Nothing else will suffice on a home tournament. And it'll be interesting to see how Heather O'Brien gets back after returning from injury. Ashley Baxter, as Mel has said, a winger during the World Cup of 2014, is playing in blindside. 10 seconds. And we're almost set to go here. 10 seconds. Well, Australia, since 2014, have played five test matches and lost all five. Three of those were against New Zealand, though, and all of them against top side, so maybe not a fair reflection of their ability. As Stapleton, to a huge roar, gets Ireland underway in the first touch for the captain, Shannon Parry, in the scrum cap for Australia. And first possession to the visitors to Dublin. Taken up by Patu. And a roll from her. Little shipped on from... Cheyenne Campbell, the hooker for Australia. And this is a good flowing attack early on from Australia to bring play just over that 10 metre line. Little step from Trilly Pomari. And she takes the tackle. There for Baker. And up the middle goes Molly Gray. Brilliant to see her back fit after an horrific injury back in February. Pomari again looking to release some of the outside backs now a line taken up the middle by Kato Sovo and then advantage being played as the ball goes into touch it's no advantage oh how about that Australia what a way to start Stop from the moment goal. when Perry took the Green kick ball. off accurately she called it nailed it and then the continuity play they looked after their rut but this year probably that ball should have been given to Murphy she was hitting a hole she changed the angle Poxy you got these binding please but promising stuff from the underdogs, Australia. Shoulders out. So, wow, you could see what she was trying to do, run that tight line, but just um, miscommunication between Shoulders. the two. And the first scrum in the game will go to Ireland. Set piece. Australia really struggled Crouch. at scrum and line out over the summer, so it'll be interesting to see how they deal Fine. with the Irish challenge here. Lindsay Peets, Cleena Maloney, and Isla Sheegan, experienced front row players. Maybe Ireland feel they have an edge there. They try to go forward. It's a bit messy. And we'll reset with an Irish pulling. Well, one thing you've got to say about Australia, they might have only played five yeah. test matches since the last Rugby World Cup, but they've played New Zealand three times, England once, and Canada, and that's the top teams in the yeah. world. And what we noticed from the June series leading up into this World Cup is a massive improvement in what they put out onto the field. They've got more accurate. And that there, the scrum, they held their own just then. Crouch! get a chance to have another look at this Fine. now. Such an important feature of the 15s game. Ireland just trying to recycle to the back, controlled by O'Brien, and Ali Miller is all the way off her ring. The little dummy by Alison Miller straight up the throat. And the tackle goes in from Pumari. And where they go. Murphy with the pass to Cheryl. It went forward, though, and advantage being played to Australia. Decent hit. And the first Irish attack comes to no advantage. It's gone forward well, in the you could argue green. that was a try saver from Murphy, that big hit. And great work though from Ireland because they identified that there was space out there. And she was by herself, the right ringer. Good standard. Good standard yeah. for a scrum. Good standard, okay? Not good, thanks for that tackle. Nima Considine looking to get her first touch. I'm sure every time she does get the ball, over on that far wing, she'll have the crowd roaring her on as Shannon Parry gets ready to lock Crouch. down on the open side flank. Sevens captain, Five. now 15s captain, she is a leader. Six. And the battle between herself and Claire Malloy is worth the entrance fee alone. Seven on seven, and the two captains going head to head again. Ireland tried to shove through, but it's Australia who get the penalty. It goes down in the on front the row. And you've gone down. And the referee right on the spot. Yep, they'll be kicking themselves there, Ireland because they do have a dominant scrum they don't need to go in on the angle just stick to their processes what they always do and they should be able to dominate over this australian scrum as the game progresses australia try and go up the line get played just over that 10 meter line and they will have their own put into the line out go go come over see mahalia murphy coming off her wing and standing in behind charlene pomari it's like a, a pre rehearsed move if they can get good ball off the top to try and work with here. Parry goes up. Ireland try and put pressure on. And Malloy's in over that ball. 
They can shift her at the moment, but uh, they went Scott forward. Scott off the top. The line-out wasn't over, so we're out From an Irish team. hand, so it'll be a scrum to oh, Australia. Cool. Shannon Perry involved in everything. Ford off the top. God. You must go straight for me, OK? If you want to be dominant, go straight, not down. Set pieces definitely where Australia we want to set the platform. Crush! Bind! Sit! Hold it! Hold it! Ready, Molly! Baker feeds. Stay half. Decent strike as well from Campbell. All the way back to her scrum half. Pomare. Looking to release Sharni Williams. The pass wasn't good, and Jenny Murphy's after this one. Looking to hunt down. Prevent Australia getting the pass away. Decent tackle goes in, and they're at the Masters. But Shannon Parry is there, Back. and Australia will recycle. Komari to act as scrum half with three runners outside. Big crash up the middle from Grace Hamilton. Back for a scrum half, and Baker in behind to Campbell. Samoa hits the deck. Komari, little step from the out half, nice feet as well to break the first tackle. And there for Baker once more. This is the handoff attempt from Gray. Ireland just having to defend now and keep their discipline as they try and go wide. Campbell with the pass. Ireland struggling at the moment to contain Australia. Parry. In goes Fitzpatrick to try and rob it. Still there. Sharni Williams. Williams trying to open up the legs and go through the gap. Sharni Williams tackled by Alison Miller. Malloy in on the top of it. Looked like it went forward from her. Play on, says the referee. Baker with the pass to Halisha Samoa. Options both sides for available. the Aussie scrum half. Baker, again, nice crash ball from Parry. Takes a good line, gets over the gain line. Baker once more, and the wrap out here. This is better from Australia, and Ireland having to defend. I just said no effect. No. Stakes are so high, even in this opening game and the structure of the tournament. Got to start with a win to Push give yourself a chance of progressing. Taking this time by Millie Boyle and the big second row hits the ground Pomari little cross it's field kick first. chases on from Treherne Tyrrell is back there looks for the safety of touch I'll tell you what Mel decent Australia attack I'm loving that they've come here and they're putting a good show on so far Australia you know everybody counted them out but let's not forget they have beaten Ireland twice at Sit two again previous Go. Rugby World Cups for some reason they perform well here and my argument would be because they're a nation that watches rugby league super rugby and Aussie rules as well and so naturally they're quite instinctive ball off the top Baker Tomari Dummies to her right gives it left where Molly Gray carries it into contact Just lost it you had a fear crack. still there for Australia back inside well, the parry and advantage being played to Ireland for nah, a knock-on. You've lost control of the own player. So Ireland will get the scrum to survive the Australian yeah. onslaught. Yeah, I think the Irish defence has been very good so far. You could argue that they should push up a little bit faster with the line speed, but they've been really disciplined, just keeping in that one line. So Australia finding it very difficult to try and break tackles. Australia have come to play, though. Make no mistake about that. And Ireland... I suppose in terms of the Six Nations, looking back, Ireland were quite structured in, in how they approached each game. They don't have a huge amount of Five. line breakers in their team, but that's the way they play. They rely on their forward power Six. and doing the basics right. Australia, Australia, you feel, have that X factor, though. Yeah, a lot of spice in that Australian back line. Check that out. Oh, nearly won it. Nearly won against the heads, and Ireland a little bit lucky to get away with it. Heather O'Brien picks off the base of the scrum and makes about two metres in uh, contact. Play on back with Muldoon. Box kick from the scrum half. She's outside of 22. She can't go straight into touch, and that was a mistake and a bad one because it's given a platform to Australia right outside the 22 meter line. Fascinating to see what Australia do here. They had Perry go up and take that line out ball last time. Time off. Didn't quite work for them. I'm liking Paul Mare, the first five on debut for Australia. I think her skill set's very high. Time she's on. taking the ball up to the line. She puts it out in front of her, and she'll You're be outside. a threat at some point if she does try and attack instead of passing it out. That's Riley, the target for Ireland. 
didn't Favourite. quite go into her hands, but it's come back Release, on the Irish side. And Australia get the scrum. Well, what looked like it could be a turnover ball from the line-out, Ireland cough it up, and Australia will get the put into the scrum. Yeah, that was uh, fantastic one, work by Patu. It was a, not a great line-out throw, but there's Patu coming through, nabbing it, and then her physical strength meant that she was able to put it on her side of the ruck, and she had enough support there too. She clearly ripped it. Crouch! Bind. Sit. Hold the weight, Island. Big shot from Ireland in the front row. Massive show from the Irish front row. That's the set piece that we talked about. And that has got the home fans cheering, Mel. This was a massive score. Uh, nothing better for a pack when they push another team back off a scrum. And just a bit of panic there from Australia. Number eight there, Hamilton probably released herself from that scrum a little bit too early and it meant that they were pushing seven against eight. Well, a mistake again from Ireland as Stapleton doesn't find touch and that's a let off and a chance to launch the counter-attack for Australia here. We mentioned the kicking skills of Neil Briggs and how much they might be missed. Stapleton has got to do better as Tyrrell tries to go through the gap, but none there. Right, hands off, uh, Holly Murphy closing it. No, she's fine. No, before she can play. even set her feet. Go, take a step. And Savao as well to make life difficult for Ireland. Muldoon with a pop ball to Isla Sheegan. Ireland is trying to carry and relieve some pressure away from their 22 metre line. Muldoon got away from the first tackle. Penalty advantage. Fitzpatrick. Ireland have penalty advantage now. Stapleton, flat pass to Naobu. To take it almost at a standing start and did well to recycle. Stapleton has two outside and now a chance here for Baxter. He's got one outside. Malloy, Malloy subbed in the tackle. Really good hit from Marsters. And then a chance for Australia to pick for the penalty against them. Really good tackle by the right ring for Australia. And Ireland with the penalty. Wasn't it just? She absolutely flattened her. And it was Cheyenne Campbell who, who thought that all her Christmases had come at once with the ball popping out of the back of that breakdown. But referee said it wasn't out. Let's have another look. Here it comes. Perfect position, nice and low, hitting with the shoulders, gripping with the arms. I wish my under nine and ten boys could tackle like that. But they're just not teaching them right now. <laughs> All about technique. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, Neve Briggs looks on, heartbreak for her a couple of weeks ago when she was ruled out of the tournament. Cleaner Maloney. Full line out, full compliment for Ireland. Miles Riley, that's why she's so effective in a set piece, rising highest. And Ireland set them all, bit of a gap on the right hand side, and that's where Same they go. Ball. Lindsay <laughs> Peaks gets the body position low. So too Ryder Seagan. Still connected. Still there. Muldoon to Stapleton, ball behind to Naupu, it's a crash of 12 on 12, and Shawnee Williams did well. Baxter. Leave it here. Back. Stapleton. Pete. High tackle against Australia, another Irish penalty. Look, I tell you what, there is a massive Bring hole in defence, in the Australian defence, around that number 10 position because the Fords are really trying to take on the Irish Fords and they're leaving a big gap on her inside. If the Irish team can identify that well, and the number the 10 can get a runner on her inside, they're going to make some holes. Green, Green, sit up on the line for me. That was the high tackle on Lindsay Peet. She's such a strong ball carrier. It takes a lot to bring her Possibly down, but the referee the team, that one, legal. And this is a decent attacking platform for Ireland. Line out on the 22 metre line. And again, you would imagine that uh, Mary Louise Riley will be the target here. She's got Heather O'Brien in front to lift. Paul Fitzpatrick, who can also jump on the line and is standing right behind her. It's O'Brien who goes up. And Ireland have dropped it. Went backwards as the referee. Took to the legs, but only did well. 
Ali Miller standing just inside Stapleton as Ireland push forward in the pack and this is where the battle is being won at the moment up front for Ireland. Balls available. Back foot, go. That's fine. Pick and go. Muldoon asking for instructions, Ireland happy and content to keep it in the pack. Maloney with another carry, great work from the hooker. Options both sides now as Ireland pull forward, Maloney in the thick of things. The Release captain one. almost got away from the tackle. There for Muldoon, Stapleton comes left, he's got two outsider, Ali Miller trying to control her with her knee, won't thank her out half of the pass. And that was an opportunity that went back in. Off the knee and they do some things very well at the moment, Ireland. The pick and go was really working for them. They ate the metres up. But then the blood. execution where it matters is just a little out of kilter, isn't it? And the Iraq ball is quite slow compared to the Australians as well. And here it is there, that pass. Might have been better to go to hands and get your centre there. Murphy just to draw and pass. Well, what about Claire Malloy, captain, 29 years of age, plays her club rugby with Bristol. She's a doctor, and I think she's uh, taking a belt on the nose there. I'm sure she knows exactly what's wrong with her. Yeah, self diagnosis. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, just something to stem the bleeding, and I think uh, should be okay to continue. I love the story of her that the Cardiff Airport staff recognise her because she'd turn up in her scrubs on her way back to. Ireland to train every weekend with this lot, which is fantastic. Yeah, there's no doubting her commitment, Claire Malloy, to the Irish cause. And uh, her 54th international cap today, her third World Cup. Well, a physical game. Here's some of the hits. Jenny Murphy to start things off. Yeah, very physical indeed. Both teams getting into it big time. Look at that. Lovely read by Williams. Well, Mary Louise Riley took the line out, but she got turned upside down and did well to hang on to that ball because it looked like there was a hit in the air, maybe accidental, but she did hang on. And Ireland again through their pack, foot, foot. trying to find ground in behind the Australian defence. Malloy, none the worse from the knock to the nose. Malloy over the gain line and still going, wasn't held. Muldoon, crash up the middle is Maloney. Take over. Tackler told to let go. Still there for the Irish scrum half. Stapleton has three outside. Stapleton fancies a half cut. And she's dragged to the ground. Back foot, back and foot now ball. it's Lindsay Pete. That's a good You have to act as scrum half. Ireland lose it forward. Knock on. Australia survive. It's just a little bit predictable, the Irish attack at this point. The one off runners, the pick and goes. It might be time just to. Spread that ball out wide and give those backs an opportunity. Can we just check what happened in the air, please? Tim well, this is what uh, Tim, we're just going to show we you talking um, about. the yellow player going across the line out. Okay. Mary Louise Riley took the line out and she was brought down on her head. They just want to see and check if there was foul play here. At first sight, it looked accidental, but let's have a look at looking it here. At yellow a better three. Angle, look at yellow three. No, I think her lifters dropped her. That would be my first. Do you want to see that again, Tim? Yes, someone was just in my yes, ear at that point. Okay. Look at the action. Unless of yellow number three. three there from Australia takes out her lifter, then she might get yeah, penalised. Let's have a look. Alicia. Oh, she just turns oh, her back. I no. Mean, I don't. It's it did look like she was dropped, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. I, I, look, Great. I don't Another think there's anything you, in that. Tim. Let's have a look. There's the lifters. She's up in the air, beautifully taken. Yeah, they they drop her. They absolutely drop her. And one more angle, Tim. Just see if there's contact here on the leg. I mean, it does look like it's kind of six and one half a dozen in the other. There is a bit of contact. Was there any intent? Her back was turned. What I'm saying is... That's all the angles, Tim. That's all saying, the angles. What I'm saying is green's gone up to the line out. Yellow hasn't gone up. And the Irish girl's fallen to the ground. I feel that her own support players... Well, there you go, you called it. bring her down to ground. So I'm happy with Called my it because it's happened to me before. <laughs> okay, so Tim. that explains <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, landed on my head. Too many times. <laughs> so you called it, Mel. I mean, the lifters just no. didn't offer the right support, and that's what happens. Right here. Yeah, a bit of a crime. It's not fit. We were just checking if sure that, that line out. Should have a bit of a word to her lifters there. Marie Louise oh. Riley. <laughs> is a crucial scrum for Australia because the last couple they've Crouch. struggled. 
Ireland got a penalty from the last crowd. Baker looking to feed quickly Six. and get this one away. Tomare standing in the pocket. That one didn't go in the, the gate at all, so we'll also. have to refeed and reset. We had a bit of an accident before the ball came in. <laughs> Resetting strong. Someone's back was harder than she anticipated. <laughs> Katrina Barker, she's another player that's played in the centres and at half back these days. Millie Crouch. Boyle in the Australian second row has gone off for a HIA, so Rebecca Five. Clough has come yes. in in her place. Sit! Until, if and or when she is clear to continue. The feed from Baker needs to be at the back quickly. That's a really good scrum. And Grace Hamilton carries right. down Hands the blind off. side. Hands off! Australia kind of trying to win quick ball and get it back to Pomari and get this one away from their own 22. Get them behind. Green, Green, take a step. Another carry and another effort asked. Patu takes two to drop her down. Baker back to Pomari. The pressure from Fitzpatrick. She was picked in the second row. She's a number eight by trade mail. She was picked for her speed and her ability to get around the park. And there was an example of it there. Yeah, she used to be a number 10, didn't she? And then moved into the forwards. True. Fantastic. And, you know, all that hard work done by the forwards from Australia, run by an off kick. And, of course, Joe Smith there. Joe Schmidt and Simon Easterby looking on, giving their support. Brilliant to see. And this an important line out. Riley goes up. It's a clean take this time, and Ireland set them all. Body position's low. Good technique, and onwards they go. They've spotted a soft gap in the Australian defence. Can they get towards that line? This is where they're strong. Egan puts her hands on the ball. Fancies a pick and go herself. It's the tight head for Ireland, Eilish Egan. She's tackled short of the line. Muldoon wants another effort from the pack. Maloney presents it well. O'Brien this time picks and goes. Baxter in to try and clean up possession. Ireland still going forward. They should be at the line. Can they get it down? Brilliant defence from Australia. Muldoon has to dig one out now. Stapleton, crash ball from Murphy. Thumped in the tackle. She scored from a similar position against Scotland in the Six Nations. No joy there. Ali Miller on the outside is Egan. Egan switches track and comes back to have a go herself. There was numbers outside. Muldoon once more gets her hands in the ball. Larissa Muldoon for Ireland scores the first try in the game. And they go crazy. And well deserved too. Persistence, patience. They forced set that up and then they put it out in the backs. It wasn't pretty at times. You know, a defensive lapse too from Australia. See Murphy being told to go to the left by the Australian halfback Barker and that was a mistake. She needed to stay there because Ireland had been attacking down that close channel a lot of the time. So great work though. That's what you want your halfbacks to do. It's taken 20 minutes and we have the first score of the game. A tale of two halves within that 20. Australia dominating for the first 10. Ireland roaring back into it. But they have to try to show for their efforts. And with the conversion to come from underneath the post, this should be a formality for Nora Stapleton. No problem with the strike. Ireland off to a flyer. They lead Australia by seven points to nil. And just here, lovely body position. Easy pick up and going over her opposite number nine. Every halfback loves that. And how they enjoyed it as well. Well, don't young drop and old. the baby. <laughs> Everybody enjoying that one from an Irish point of view. Australia, what have they got in response halfway through this first half? As uh, Trillian Pomari. Backwards. Gets us back underway. Ashley Baxter with the handoff. And then Australia, two and six. Campbell and Gray run into each other, trying to make the tackle. Stapleton with the flat pass to Egan. She sucks in a few defenders back to Stapleton. And then Naupu to Murphy. Better play from Ireland. Murphy with the pass on the outside. Considine, it went forward. It did go forward. Referee perfectly placed to see that one. Oh, it's gone forward. Bit of space on that right-hand edge we've seen a couple of times already. 
Maybe the inexperience on defence of Murphy as well. She needed to trust her inside there and stay on the winger. But great interposing play from Ireland, even though the execution of the end wasn't quite on the money. Australia with the scrum there. Last one went perfectly according to plan from around five metre line. Fine. Sit. Steady, bring. Decent strike. Ball for Baker. For Maddy. Sharni Williams. Mahalia Murphy all the way off her wing. Murphy gets the offload away. Lovely pass. Trey Hearn. Little dummy again by the winger. Marsters trying to get away from Jenny Murphy. And now Upu just told to stay out of there. Pomari at scrum half. Back to Baker. Reversal of roles for 9 and 10. And the Australian halfback partnership. An advantage against Ireland and for Australia for a penalty. Little dummy from Halisha Samoa. Accidental offside. We got back for the penalty. This is kickable. Australia look dangerous when they bring in a player like Murphy. She got the offload away. We saw a little bit of speed there from Loretta Masters as well. It was Ireland's first penalty they conceded in this match, so their discipline's been very good. She was Do you see very up on flat, the line? wasn't she, Hamilton, when sit she received that ball? She didn't really run onto it. They really needed to be a little bit more disciplined there. Move up the line, girls. No, they're all right there. Clean and Maloney to throw. Line out bang on that 22-meter line. Go towards the back. Riley gets up to try and disrupt, but it's taken by Halisha Samoa. And then Ireland get a hand on it, but it looked from an offside position from here. Referee happy to play on as Maloney takes a tackle, and then Pete comes in to make a hit I can't guess on Grace here, Hamilton. Okay. I can't, I can't guess. Bit of a mess, that one. Yeah, I don't think he saw it. I think O'Brien was offside because a mall had been formed. Off the shoulder, line Just up. before this. Well, I can tell you that uh, Millie Boyle has passed the HIA, so she will come back on in place of Rebecca Clough and rejoin the freight. As Maloney prepares to throw. Irish back standing pretty flat out there. Ball was meant for Heather O'Brien, but she couldn't hold it. Irish forwards again been asked to pick and go. Lindsay Pete from Railway Union. In back foot, South ball. County Dublin. Well Fitzpatrick from St Mary's. Also a Dublin club. Muldoon to Baxter. Tech Straight release. into contact. Well Cheyenne Campbell puts back her on foot, the ball. ground. Well done. It's taken back. Back to Stapleton. Miller. Ireland trying to run from well inside their own 22. And Ali Miller, good strength in the contact there to get through the first challenge. Muldoon once more. Maloney. Stapleton. Long floating pass on the outside to Peace. Tackled and now looked high. Referees playing advantage. Malloy. Stapleton. Keep the mark, Egan. Still there for Ireland. It's gone forward. Go back, back for the, the penalty. High tackle. High tackle. The style high. of defence that Australia Kept are putting them. out there is it's extremely awesome. physical. And it's on the occasion, sometimes those tackles just go a little high. Go here. Ireland not making too many metres when they've got the ball in hand, and that's because they're standing quite deep if you have a look at where Stapleton stands it's well behind the last advantage line so it makes it harder on her team to make those meters and it has been a problem area as well in the Six Nations Ireland only just about getting past Scotland and in truth they would have been expected to win comfortably but Stapleton does stand very very Stapleton. deep here was the high tackle and it was against Pomari who's making her first appearance for Australia Australia number 10 Clean Maloney goes to the back, Fitzpatrick off the top, Muldoon, that's better from Ireland, Stapleton picks it up on the bounce and then takes it up herself. Muldoon once more has Jenny Murphy to aim for. 
tackled by Sharni Williams. And still there for Ireland, Maloney. Playing advantage. Lost it. And lost it forward. Advantage. advantage to be played to Australia. Might fancy no, a go. Foot. Down that blind side where they seem to be queuing up. Taken up by Chloe Butler. Baker looking for runners. One of them is Grace Hamilton. Teco! Still there for from Australia. Liz Patu. Seven, you've lost it. Malloy told to leave it. Doesn't want to give away a penalty again. Pomari, nice ball behind. Sharni Williams trying to exploit the gap. Williams and a pass on the outside is good. Marsters trying to get past Naupu. Really good tackle by Senny Naupu. And Ireland and Alison Miller rip it. It's gone into touch and then also went forward. It's a question of which happened first. Line it. Not yet. Lying on. Quickly taken. Australia get on with it. It's with Trey Hearn. Floating past the outside. Mahalia Murphy's got loads of pace. The seventh flyer. Mahalia Murphy! Australia strike! Brilliant try by the seventh flyer. And what a response after conceding that try. It was absolutely incredible because they took the quick line out. It was unorthodox, speeding the game up like that is not, I guess, how Six Nations rugby happens very often, but it was Shannon Parry, the Sevens captain, who threw it in quickly, and it was a genius move and a brilliant pass there from the fullback, Trey Hearn. And I said this one here was going to be lethal when she did get the ball in space. How about that? It's a fascinating clash, isn't it? I mean, the structure that Ireland play against the X factor that this player, Mahalia Murphy, and her fellow backs have they just have that pace to exploit Ireland yeah and they they won't pull out the same kind of moves that phase play that you might see um, up in the northern hemisphere they will try different attack methods because they are struggling at set piece so they've got to put something else out there to try and compete with Ireland so conversion attempt to level things up then from Samantha Traherne Sun seems to be a little bit into her face but it, it's not the most difficult of kicks just a, a bit of an angle to negotiate here that's what faces her well their regular kick up Ashley Houston's actually on the bench oh look at that the ball fell off the tee just as she went to strike oh that's unlucky really I think she was appealing to the referee can I not take that one again unfortunately <laughs> that's it one for the highlights reel not <laughs> Well, Mahalia Murphy can put that try in her highlights reel because uh, it was a brilliant show of pace from the winger. And the gap now just two points with half an hour played in UCD's Belfield Bowl. It's been a, an entertaining game so far. Oh, I'm just glad that it's a contest, a close one. It's what we were looking for. Stapleton restarts and again doesn't get a lot of height and not a, an opportunity for her supporting runners to take advantage of it. As Kayla. So Vau gets Bonnet. over the game line and then Ireland put in a tackle, force a knock on, and it should be a scrum. Ball off goal, in green. It is. Yeah. Grace Hamilton hit the line really well there, but just a little bit over eager. Probably looked up at the defensive line. And didn't look after the ball first and foremost. Good standard, good standard so far. It's good in 10 though. So Ireland with the scrum. In a decent position, stable and talking to Naupu and uh, Murphy, and even Constantine has come off her wing as well. She's another Five. player with sevens experience, wouldn't be a, a regular seven Six. squad member on the HSBC senior se series, but she plays a rugby with UL Bohemians down in Limerick. Good show from Australia this time, forcing Ireland back. Have they managed to get their hands on the ball? They have, you know. That's a really good set-piece effort from Australia, oh, and they've turned the tide on Ireland. Crash up the middle, Halisha Samoa. Another pick and go. This time it is Patu, so tight head and loose head carrying She's for Australia to the 10-metre line. Baker, Pomare, Shawnee Williams. The pass was a good one. So it's Samantha Trey Hearn, and then an equally good tackle by Alison Miller, who does not shy away from those. Tomari to Baker. Handoff from Molly Gray. Tackle release! Trying to go to ground. Ireland told to leave her. It's her own player slowing her down. The slow coming on. back. And again, the offload straight up the middle. Goes Cheyenne Campbell. The hooker's away. Campbell wants support. 
Tackle goes in from Hannah Tyrrell. Had to be made. And away they go again. Big hits by Jenny Murphy. Welcome to the game. Something tackled stay there, stay there. by Ireland's outside centre. No! Baker once more. Samo with the pass. This is Butler. Recycling the ball. Off they go again. Great. Into contact. Ireland having to defend now. Any missed tackles and Australia have that pace to explore. Exploited. Ball back inside from Williams to Salvao and knock on advantages now to Ireland. Naupu straight into a brick wall. The hits keep coming. Stapleton. It's over from knock on. Miller. Alison Miller cutting in off her wing. Shot it's a good down counter. and a good tackle by Noretta Masters. Release! You're under penalty advantage. Advantage Australia for a penalty taken up by Butler. Baker. Campbell, who made that original break two minutes ago one. to start off the Australia attack. And he's facing that side now. Charlie Williams will take the penalty. We go all the way back forth. Yeah, good decision there, Williams. But I tell you what, this is a blockbuster. It's like a, still another in right edition of Fast side. and Furious with not only the big hits that have been put out, but also the speed of those rucks from Australia. They are um, shifting this Irish defence all over the park, and you can see they're feeling it. <laughs> Aussie players on the ground. Yeah. And then you've got to ask the question, who's got the way? conditioning out of these two teams? I think Ireland would back the fitness by the end of 80 minutes. It'll be interesting to see yeah, what I've happens as the game goes on. That was the break from Campbell to set off a really good attack, but Campbell looking for support. The tackle had to be made from Hannah Tyrrell. Just what we said in the changing room. Just, that just, oh, yeah. There's yeah. there. Yeah. Sorry, that just yeah. makes me happy seeing that stuff. <laughs> I think uh, Australia's lines, how they're hitting the short ball, um, that's giving them a big advantage because they start out slightly wide and then they change their angle for the pop pass and it's working very well for them. Bit of attention for Sharni Williams then. Just looks like uh, a strap around the boots. And she doesn't look to be in any discomfort as all as we approach uh, six and a half minutes left to play. Well, we know what she does in the sevens game. And I suppose when you look at the USA team today, they had seven sevens players in their starting 15. New Zealand had the likes of Portia Woodman in there as well. And, and the Canadians have even brought a few back. I mean, there might be a question mark about why Australia don't utilise their sevens players in the 15s game. But... Uh, yeah, there's a lot more investment in the sevens games over there, and that's, I guess, why they won the gold medal. I guess the key point about Williams and Perry is that they both started in the 15s game, so it's very easy for them to come back and adjust to what they have to put out in the paddock. Campbell to throw, looks for Butler, and again, it's Riley gets up highest, steals ball, and Kleena Maloney recovers to set it up. Peaks, dumped backwards by Parry. Brilliant tackle by the Australia captain. Stapleton calling for this one. It's taken back. They're going to run it again from inside their 22. Now Opu. Chopped down at the knees. It's taken back, Rose. Stapleton again. Little chink over the top. It's meant for Considine. Oh, she couldn't quite hold on it. Yeah. And it's gone forward. Great variation on attack, though, wasn't it? It was a pretty Options good of kick. a scrum or a line out. Scrum? Scrum's called. And it will be scrum ball for Australia. Once on, again, just to go this standing way. really deep there. But that was lovely, wasn't it? In fact, I think she took Pops to nine, took her eye off the ball, and that's why she dropped it. I think she was watching the gold jersey coming in to open her up if she did manage <laughs> to catch it. <laughs> Absolutely. And said, uh, I'll just have a look and see. And then the ball goes forward. Five minutes to play in the first half, an entertaining one so far. The crowd, plenty to shout about. Arnhem with first blood in the try. From Larissa Muldoon and then Mahalia Murphy opening up the Irish defence to score. And bring the gap to two.
Omari to Shawnee Williams, little switch in the centre is a good one, and Soval takes the tackle, there for Baker once more, Butler again tries the offload, and the swing and the dummy from Australia, they keep it alive, Parry, tackle by Malloy, seven on seven again, pick and go this time from Samoa, and she's just short of that 22 metre line, Malloy's Campbell in to try and dig it out, Ireland told to leave it, and they do a good job of slowing it down. This is Grace Hamilton. Good carry by the number eight. Again, Malloy back on her feet. She was a tackler. Had to release, and she did so. Campbell once more into Riley. Riley puts her down. Options all on this left hand side. Now, Pomari, little step from her. Pomari still going, has to be stopped. Good little half break. Good retention as well. Millie Boyle. Can't quite get a body position, and the Riley needs to get out of there. there. Australia still have it, and they go to the right hand side this time. Patu wrestling no, with Claire Malloy really for the ball. Ireland told to leave it. No, Good retention by Australia. Can they put more points on the board? Samoa keeping her feet well. Support from Gray. She's held up though. Heather O'Brien and Riley with their hands on that ball. Turnover ball surely for Ireland. They've got several pairs of hands on it. And referee's whistle has gone. It's really good defensive work. Yeah, that was excellent ball. because they were under all kinds of pressure. Ireland, to the body position there of the ball carry, just a little bit too high. Let's have a look. The upper body strength. Two Irish defenders there. Riley can claim it and probably Pete as well and of course talking to the referee just alluding him to the fact that they had the dominance excellent well how important will that be Australia going through the phases they're finding gaps in the Irish defence but just when they needed Alicia Samoa to hit the ground and recycle she got held up and a chance for Ireland to clear Muldoon with the feed pressure again it's gone round O'Brien picks it off the back good tackle by the Australian scrum half Baker watched her every step of the way from the base of the scrum still there Eilish Egan into contact less than two minutes to go Same as the penalty the... goes to Ireland not rolling away in the tackle chance to clear I'd say that Australia would be feeling just a little bit frustrated because there were a couple of times in their own rucks where the Irish players were over the ball. Referee said the ball was available, but it seemed like a very similar situation there. Don't, don't question every decision. Okay? He's, telling, he's telling Shannon Parry, Parry off from questioning him. <laughs> well, that's what a good captain does, doesn't it? Gets in the referees here. As long as you don't go overboard and Time turn off. him against the team. Mary Louise Riley was just struggling with her knee there. Oh, she's been huge so far for them, hasn't she? Right, let's have a look at these tries then, Mel. The tail of the tape so yeah, far. Yeah, very different time. style of tries, really. And that one was just individual effort. Muldoon identifying what was in front of her and going for it. And this one here, power, pace, just wonderful. And that was from that quick throw in from the line out. One go, was. Go. A try from flair and opportunity. The other was a lot of hard work by their pack and whole 15 from Ireland. So Ireland and uh, Maloney with the line out inside the last minute of the first half here. This one you feel going to go right down to the wire. Little to separate these two teams. Australia dominating possession. They've got no! 56% of it so far for the first half. That's it, that's it. But it's Ireland who lead by two. And this mall, a very effective weapon by the home side. All about getting the win here. Doesn't matter how you do it. Win ugly, win at all costs to keep Playing the semi-final hopes Real alive. Advantage. Because France still to come in this pool, don't forget. It could be a very close table at the end of the three matches. You're under penalty advantage. Are in penalty advantage. Baxter carries. Muldoon goes to the left-hand side. Maloney, not the quickest, tries the hand off, the tackle goes in, we go back forward. for the penalty. And Liz Patu stopping goal. the Irish hooker in her tracks and looked like she took a bit of a thump on the ground as she went to land there. Uh, I wouldn't Was be it high? 
it was, and I wouldn't be surprised if the TMO is looking at that right now. It was just her arm over the shoulder, and, and you know, Maloney felt quite difficult. Yeah, the old seatbelt tackle. Seen them given. We've gone the 40. Nora Stapleton says that's enough. We need the sanctity of the dressing room. The Irish fans on their feet to applaud off the home team. Australia, though, I tell you what, they're right in this game. They've played some really good rugby, and none more so than the try from Mahalia Murphy, who leaves the pitch and taps on the shoulders all round. Half time here at the Belfield Bowl in UCD. Ireland lead, but only just by seven points to five. We have the second half coming right up. Push, push. Not yet, playing on.
whatever now. And you're welcome back as the second half is about to get underway between Ireland and Australia in this Pool C opener at the UCD Bowl in Dublin. We've had a brilliant day of World Cup action so far, plenty of tries, plenty of drama as well. And this one, on the basis of the first 40 minutes, looks like it's going right down to the wires. Sean O'Brien looking on.
Scott Vardy beside him, Leinster's new signing and uh, how they could do with him next season. But we have a game to decide here and Mel Robinson, it's a tough one to call this. Well, Ireland might be ahead, but it's Australia who've looked far more dangerous. The difference, they live on the advantage line and evidence of that's shown by the fact they've had the same number of carries as Ireland, but have made 94 yeah. metres. 10 seconds. Missed tackles as well from Ireland in the first half, 12 okay. versus just two for Australia. You cannot, at this level, keep making mistakes like that in defence and expect to hold a team with the attacking quality of Australia out as Katrina Baker gets us back underway and the first touch for Ashley Baxter. who did a lot of the hard work and unseen work for Ireland in that first half of blinds out flanker Stapleton to Lindsay Peat. And she carries towards that 22 metre line. Muldoon, try score to Stapleton. Shifting to the left hand side, Heather O'Brien back in to Baxter once more. Pete runs into Hillisha Samoa. Here from Muldoon, Stapleton. Now Upu switching tack, stepping off her right foot, trying to create some space. Fitzpatrick. Here's Malloy, the captain. Step tackled and tackled step, well step by Kayla Sauvau. Muldoon. Egan. A lot of effort for Ireland and still not out of sight of their own 22, so Muldoon opts for the box kick and finds touch over that 10 metre line. Decent kick. Well, that was their best option. I mean, there was about eight phases there, and they probably made one metre from where they took it from the kickoff. And Australia struggled a little at the lineouts. So they've lost three, so Ireland should just go to the sideline all day and put pressure on their lineout. Shane Campbell to throw. Goes to the back. Was that one straight? Referee said it was, and Parry was smashed on the tackle by Claire Malloy as she went to give the pass away and then another big hit goes in in the centre on, advantage to Ireland for the knock on yeah Mahalia Murphy just a little bit of an inexperience there she hasn't played in the a lot of sevens Three at all uh, 15 sorry right here she needed to uh, take that ball yeah, no and she tried to pass it to somebody in a worse position than her just needed to straighten up and take it into contact there was the tackle, seven on seven again. It's been a, a brilliant battle all evening long here in UCD between the two open sides. Shoulders out. Crutch. Bind. Sit. Muldoon defeat. Cheryl standing to the right. With Consolo. What a show from Australia and really Heather Bryant did the right thing to getting that out there. Stapleton puts the ball in behind. Across comes Trey Herb. Needs to deal with this one. Trey Herb under pressure. She's dropped that, has she? Referee has a look and says no, play on. Australia storming back and it looked like uh, Tomari took a hit as well and she's down on the ground. There's a collision. It's going to be goal ball. Herself and Fitzpatrick I think went knee to knee almost. That was the tactic that Ireland just needed a to lay out. It was ball. a beautiful Both kick, wasn't it? Knees. Right in that corner, ball. put Trahoon under no, it's all kinds of pressure, it's and they had a position. brilliant just chase to Ireland. Okay. And that just shows you how physical this game is. Nothing like getting Thanks kneecapped. Not that I have yeah, been no in any dark alleyway or anything like that. Well, it's don't. In, okay. in this place, in of general, all places, yeah. I tell you, not advisable. <laughs> As Australia and Ireland Fitzpatrick and Vomari get strapped up. Here we see it again, under pressure the fullback. She did well though, I thought she might have dropped it just there, I held on. Yeah, that was amazing work there by Trey Hearn. Oh, was she over the line there? Collision. There's Neve Briggs. Would love to be out there. Sorry. But it's a scrum. Them's the breaks, Passing position so. of the ball top level sport and it said has to be content got binding of these two players cheering on the squad she hasn't been right in Eve Briggs since UCD last year which was an Olympic qualifier 
picked up a bad hamstring injury. She just has not fully recovered from that. And you just wonder, with the amount of miles on the clock, will she feel like putting in the rehab necessary to make it back? I'm not so sure, but only she can answer that. She's a big loss to this Irish team, though. Well, yeah, an unfinished business, so it might motivate her to come back for at least another season. Trying to put the squeeze on. Up comes Naretta Masters to relieve some of the pressure inside her own half. Murphy has to make this tackle, no support, and a decent run it was too from She's Hamilton. And again, Ireland and Malloy come through. Come back Murphy says she was game. okay. Murphy on the inside, but taken in by Kayla Salvao. And there is Palmari at scrum half. Big tackle goes in on Millie Boyle. She's lost it. Locked forwards. Baker, crash ball, and off they go. Chance to get the hands free. Rebecca Clough just couldn't find the support. Carried in by Grace Hamilton. Hamilton sets it up. Baker to go out to the backs. Pomari spots a bit of a gap over her. And Hannah Tyrrell coming across. It sits up kindly for her. Now we know she's got loads of pace. Hannah Tyrrell trying to step off her outside foot, but did not get she's a still. chance. The tackle she's from wanted. Sharni Williams. Release, leave it, Perfectly leave timed. It. Put it down. And look at the contest from Australia at the Brighton. They managed to come away with it as well. Brilliant work by Australia. And they might catch Ireland cold here if they move this ball. Campbell, up the middle they go. Shannon Parry takes the tackle. Backwards it went. Again, Ireland get a boot in there. Campbell again has to deal with it. And it's messy stuff between the legs and pouncing on it. Now Upo and Murphy come together. Where's this ball? Picked up by Trey Hearn. Up the middle goes Halisha Samo. Back foot green, no green eight. Australia have plenty of numbers on the right hand side. Ireland trying to fan across here, but they might fancy a go out wide here. Alison Miller screaming for cover to come across and fan out because they're very narrow in defence at the moment, Ireland. Parry. Tries to go through the middle, almost gets away from three tackles. Great run by the captain, there for Baker. Australia and Campbell apply the pressure. It's lost forward. So much good work from Australia when it came to their attack and the way that they hit that ball, those runners. But somehow Ireland, gutsy Ireland, brave, have managed to keep their defensive lines right there. Just speed it up, please. They've plugged the holes, speed it up. they've kept their heads, and now they've got the scrum. Time off. Jenny Murphy just uh, getting a bit of attention as Tom Tierney and his coaching team, Anthony Eddy to his right-hand side, as you look at it there, director of Sevens Rugby. And... A huge amount of consultation between those two over the last couple of months that they've been preparing for this uh, 15s tournament. And it, they have to be slightly concerned by what they've seen, Mel. You you pointed up. out to me the missed tackle it's stat up. for Ireland. It's gone to 15 now versus just two for Australia. Yeah. The thing is, they've really focused, Ireland have really focused on structure and set piece. Whereas the game that Australia is playing is just moving the ball, passing the ball a lot, and they're a real quick recycle team. I wonder, I just think Ireland just need to maybe chance their arm a little bit more, have belief in themselves. They've got some incredible sevens athletes out wide. Now give them a little bit of leeway to attack. Katie Fitzhenry replaces the injured Jenny Murphy. The pressure again from Australia. The scrum has totally turned in terms of domination. Ireland started so well as Fitzpatrick comes away, but it gets the off Baxter on her Only shoulder. On. on the outside is Maloney. Good burst of pace from the hooker. Advantage over from Maloney. Maloney acts a scrum half. Lindsay Pete drops her shoulder into the tackle. Take a step. Foot is stopped in the tracks, and Ireland recycles Stapleton. 
In two minds as to what to do there. If it's Henry came across offside, well, she's only just on the pitch. Perhaps a little bit cold upstairs as well as in the body, and that was the wrong move. Well, a lack of communication really between Stapleton and Fitzhenry. I think Fitzhenry wanted the ball, she wanted to take it up. She's got the fresh legs, the fresh body. And there was no hole there, so Stapleton probably should have given it off so she could reset herself again. Trey Hearn finds touch over the 10 metre line and it will be a line out to Australia. The home crowd making their voices heard in this sellout stadium here at the Bowling UCD. The hub of student life in South Dublin and home to the women's red cup as Mary Louise Riley gets up once again to steal an Australian line out. That's the third one they've lost in the 48 minutes that we've played so far. Baxter carries, parrying over the ball, trying to make a nuisance of herself. She's so hard to shift when she gets her body position in over. Alison Miller off her wing, can't escape the first challenge. She has not she's over had the any ball. space to work with Ali Miller at all. We know how quick she is and what a brilliant try scorer she's been. But you can't work your magic if you don't get space to run into. Riley. Stapleton calling for it now. Muldoon, a little bit slow to get it out. Here is Stapleton, and there's Malloy. Again, anywhere Claire Malloy goes, Shannon Perry follows, and vice versa. They're like glue on each other, the two sevens, as Naupu tries to burst through. Good run, sending Naupu. Dragging a couple of defenders with her, Stapleton to Pete, and then Maloney takes a big, big tackle. Back in the pocket. Hands around the ball. Stapleton. Looping pass on the outside. There is room out here for Henry to Tyrrell. Tyrrell to Miller. Now there's a bit of room for Ali Miller. Gets the hands free. Call against Back giving the pass, pass though. And then quick recycle ball. That's better from Ireland. Still Australia holding their line. Pete trying to go through. Watched and dragged down by Halisha Samoa. Muldoon. Stapleton again. Again, look at the line break from Australia to try and cut out the outside pass. Here is Considine. Considine takes another tackle, can't hold on to it. An advantage now to Ireland. Considine, truth be told, hasn't had her best game so far. That's another mistake by the Irish. 50 minutes, half an hour to play. She's won that fear. Come back for the, Go back for the scrum. Uh, more promising play though from Ireland. Their forward started to do the work very well and they the set it up the so tackle, that they could no unleash out wide right on that right hand edge. Look at these hits. Six blood. All shoulder. Number six and blood. Affected the turnover Fine there. Off. It was Salwell hitting in on Considine. <laughs> she looks none the worse for it though, Emma Considine. You have a homie. It's only her second start in this Irish 15s game and her third cap. And she made her debut in the Six Nations off the bench against Scotland. Got a start the following week, and this only her second, so obviously a lot of uh, potential. Number three Just and number four, green there, sub. Carrying three it into contact and losing it forward. There's now. Paul Verrell. He's been targeting this game, clearly wants to set the stall out in the pool as Ireland make a couple of substitutions. But Patrick is off, and Egan is off, and on comes Sophie Spence at 19. From the fifth round. And Kira O'Connor from Galway and Connacht. There she is, going to pack down a tight head prop. Sophie Spence again, as I said. Now well, maybe a bit of surprise if she wasn't at the original starting 15. Well, that's right. She's a, a former Player of the Year, World Rugby Women's Player of the Year. Used to play in the back row. The key with her is she's a really good ball runner. So I'll expect Ireland to get the ball to her a lot, so she can set them up with that go forward, and also huge defensively too. She was coming Five. back from injury during the Six Nations, lost her place and then struggled to get Six. it back. But she has a chance here with uh, half an hour to play Stay to make up. a name for herself in this World Cup opener as Baker lost it forward there. Good decision by the referee and a mistake by the scrum half. Going to pick it up and Pressure it on the Australian scrum. Just a little bit of lack of experience perhaps of international test rugby where you Got to keep a clear head. Back of the gold scrum. It Green was ball. touched and then probably got yeah. kicked forward. Go hunting, Max. Go hunting. Go hunting. 
That happens. Sometimes the pools go against you. The problem that Ireland have at the moment is, Mel, they just can't Crouch. get in behind the gain line and get in behind the defensive Five. line. They don't seem to have any breakers that actually have the pace Six. to get in behind those Australian defence. Well, what they're doing on attack is quite, quite standard. We're not seeing any changes in angles or moves. So what's going to happen here? Let's find out. Heather O'Brien takes it off the back and Oprah runs straight into Trulene Pomari. No. And Pomari did not shy away from that tackle. Substitute on Kira O'Connor. Made her debut against Scotland as well in the Six Nations. And here's the first touch for Sophie Spence. Trying to use her power to get past Shannon Perry. Not too many have successfully done that on a rugby pitch. Sevens or fifteens. Stapleton to Naupu, floating past to Tyrrell, who runs onto it nicely back inside to Miller. But again, it's all too predictable in Australia. Through Sharni Williams, just shatter them across the pitch and cover the gaps. So O'Brien takes the tackle. Muldoon. Fitzhenry trying to go past Mahalia Murphy. Ireland still camped inside their own half. Tyrrell takes the hit from Soval. Stapleton. O'Brien. Spence. Looking to get the hands free. Ball presented and presented well for Muldoon. Bit of an overlap on that left hand side if they straighten up. O'Connor had to give that pass. She took it into contact when she had three players outside her and then gives away the penalty. Ireland have only themselves to blame there the because this Australian the defence the is very Take narrow. They have to look up, identify that and get the ball out to the edges. Yep. O'Connor, she had two outside her and two players, you could argue, probably faster than her. Pass. Unquestionably faster than the tight head prop, but... <laughs> Then gives away the penalty for not releasing. Maybe just uh, rush of blood to the head. She's only just onto the pitch and uh, eager to make a name for herself, perhaps. But it's just undone all that good work. And now Australia with the penalty and Trey Hearn to put them down towards the Irish 22 metre line. Uh, Australia struggling in this area of the game. They've won five line outs okay. and lost four. And whenever they throw to the middle of the line out, the ball's being thrown just a little too short and it's been picked off usually by Riley. Oh. Keep it basic, keep it simple, go off at the front, that's what I do here. Ball to the back and taken well by Rebecca Clough. And now Australia try and set them all. Ireland do a good job of starting early momentum, but Australia go again and they make some ground. 22 metre line and still going forward. Oh, Ireland have to get back on the right side, they don't want to give away a penalty here. But because the Australia is still going forward, Malloy in there to make a nuisance of herself, and then O'Connor told to leave it. Pick and go by Grace Hamilton at number eight. Still there for Australia. This is dangerous for Ireland. The pass to Millie Boyle, and she almost at the five metre line. This is a really good Australian tie. Can they finish with a score? Anything would put them in front. They're going to go wide. Bomari back inside. A winger off the bench. Narita Masters. On her blind side, I should say. And then a pick and go. Almost at the line. Hamilton. Backfoot. Just short. Desperate Irish defence. Can they keep Australia advantage. out? They've come in. O'Brien. It's an advantage. And it could be a card. Because this was a promising position. Number Heather O'Brien. What was she thinking there? The ball wasn't out. And now a chance. Short. From part two. Ball's She's just short. Still playing advantage, and they're over the line to try. Shannon Parry, the captain, crashes over for Australia. Wow, we a complete change in tactic for yeah, the Wallaroos. They, they've turned the tables in Ireland, and they've come out with a pick and go. The pack just yeah. taking it up step by step, meter by meter, and Parry, captain, fantastic gold medalist in Rio. She's got a great hit on her, this one. She knew that the ball was just centimetres away from the try line and all she did was go over the ruck. Look what it means to the travelling Australia supporters. They have silenced the Irish home crowd. Shannon Parry, captain in the right place at the right time and look at the muscle to bash her way over from close range. Bang. That all came from Ireland giving away the penalty when they had possession, they had an overlap, and 
Australia with the line out. Brilliant ball to get themselves in that position. And the rest was just sheer grunt and will to take them over the Irish line. Look, Australia have played very well. There's no doubt about that. But for Ireland, you have to ask the question, is it the pressure of being the home team? There's so much hype before this, so many interviews. You know, it's at this point of the game, with over 20 minutes to go, that they've got to bounce back, put it behind them. Not think about that home crowd. This time the ball stays on the tee, but this time the strike is awful. There's no other word for it. Samantha Treyhorn, that's just a really, really bad kick. And how crucial will that be, that miss? Because this game, only three points in it. Oh, look, so exhausted. You won't get an easier conversion than that, and that's just criminal at this level. The gap, three points, and Australia get their noses in front for the first time in the game. Heather O'Brien sits down on the bench, and Kira Griffin from UL Bohemians comes in to play the last 23 minutes of the game. It's a knock-on from Australia, scrum to Ireland. Chris Next point, you feel absolutely crucial in a tight match. Yeah, that was really messy from Australia. I like how they've got their backs ready to receive the kickoff, though. It has been a good tackle from so far. You just see the boot there of Constantine came through and messed it up for the Aussies. Cross! Five. Six. Ireland lock out the scrum. Muldoon digs one out. Constantine off her wing, up to carry it up the middle. Big tackle again on the Irish winger. Stapleton goes to the left. Fitzhenry with the pass to Tyrrell. Alison Miller trying to go on the outside. Irish crowd on their feet. Sophie Spence goes forward, gets in over the gain line and keeps the momentum going. Muldoon off the deck to Lindsay Pete. Drops the shoulder, tackled by Chloe Butler. Push, push, Still push. there for Ireland. This is a decent position and they need points on the board. Maloney. Hamilton goes in to try and steal. Maloney hangs on. Still there. Pick and go from O'Connor. Better carry from the substitute tight head. O'Connor. Griffin. Release, release. Yes. Ireland get the scrum. One, two, three, green oh, Far better the attack there from Ireland, starting from the scrum with Constantine coming off. She got crunched in half, but had enough as a Kelly to make sure that the ball came back on her team. So that was excellent because everything the Irish did there made metres and they were flat. They received the ball really flat, and that is a complete difference from how they had been attacking before. Here she is here, coming up the blind. And great recycle and lovely skills to get the ball out wide too. What an opportunity this is for Ireland. Three points the gap, 20 minutes to play. Six. Ali Miller standing just to the inside of Nora Stapleton. Centre's quite flat for Ireland, they're going to win the scrum. Ball at the back and controlled by Malloy, has gone into number eight with Heather O'Brien off the pitch. Muldoon swallowed up and gets away from the first. Miller bounces off the tackle. Alison Miller recycles, take and go from Riley. Riley runs into a golden wall. Hamilton with the tackle. Still there, Ireland pumping the leg. Sophie Spence on the shoulder. Desperate Australian defence. Ireland looking to get their second try, just short. Pete recycles and Riley short, held short again. Where's that ball? Spence trying to use her strength. On side, on side. The substitutes. Griffin. Griffin's there. Ireland the score instructor. the power, the drive, 
That was brilliant. It was good defence from Australia, but in the end, it was only a matter of a couple of centimetres and they got over. Super sub, Kira Griffin, playing with UL Bowes and Limerick, gets the try that nudges Ireland back in front and Stapleton underneath the post should make it 14 points to 10 in a four point game. Looks good, girls. Flags go up. It is a four point game and we've 18 minutes to play. Michael D. Higgins, the Irish president, happy with what he sees. Bill Bowman as well. An entertaining contest so far. 14 10. Still anybody's game. <laughs> the punt. The crowd is making so much noise. Can Australia hang on? Take a sip. The floodgates open for Ireland. Baker restarts, it's going to go the 10, Malloy's underneath it, the Irish captain leading the charge back and looking up for lovely feet by the open side, oh she goes, slippery from Claire Malloy and the try score, Kira Griffin into contact. Leave it, leave it, leave it! Stapleton, queuing up on the left hand side, here's Alison Miller, Miller trying to go around the outside over the halfway line and happy to set it up for a scrum half Malloy once more Australia looking a little bit tired at the moment no momentum has swung Ireland's way in the last five minutes Griffin once more Tickle. Muldoon to Spence impact substitutions for Ireland Spence. Sophie Spence Spence. and Kira Griffin have made a real difference here Malloy tracked the scrum half, Riley back inside. Griffin needs to be okay, careful. Now and okay, she I'm landed. Taking. Fair and square, says the referee. Advantage, straight down. Australia give away the penalty. He's gone past the ball. He went past the ball first. Hands on the ground. Well, the message has gone out to the Irish girls on the paddock that Australia are not reloading the blind side on defence and so we've seen Ireland go down that left hand side at least three times and make plenty of ground gold, gold this on the is line. where the penalty happened you see there Campbell she just didn't release when she went to go for the ball always a bit touch and go those ones when you make the tackle when can you attack when you're back on your feet the ref has to see you take your arms off before you can get back in there. Good spot for the ref. No! The right call as Malloy takes the line out. She's Ball gone the through, she's Riley fine. joins them all. Parry now to tackle, and then she leaves it. Has to try and make an attempt to roll away. It's hard when you've got back four foot. players lying on top of you, don't Get them behind, goal. Griffin carries into contact with Spence on her shoulder. Gets the ball recycled, and here's Sophie Spence into Halicia Samoa, ball's gone into touch and it should be a line out to Australia. You yeah, probably didn't want to go out there Ireland because they had all the momentum. Once again, put up the jumper, attack that Australian line out. They've had plenty of success there so Back far. Team, girls, if you're not in. Parry gets up, can't hold it. Ireland steal it. Griffin has Maloney outside her. We go back for the first defence. There was no advantage coming. It's at this point where the lungs the top. are burning. My goal. Your yeah. muscles are screaming. It's how mentally tough you are. And that ball was thrown just a little bit too high there for Parry. No, that turnover you're going for. You just went past the ball first. Just stay on your feet and go for the Clean ball. Clean just couldn't quite hang on. Attention for Liz Patu. As Neve Briggs looks on. Nervous moments for both sets of supporters with the gap just four. Rose, just watch what that guy does. 
haven't really gone to their bench, have they, Australia? Liz Putz, who's had a massive game. The work that she's put in on defence has been really impressive. She's made seven tackles. She's missed none. 12 hit-ups, 31 metres made. And plus, of course, at scrum time, she's been very competitive there too. The problem with Australia's bench is probably not as much experience yeah, as much. Ireland. What about those for dancers there, Mel? So I'm on? Yep. <laughs> Four off the top. Hey, they're having a good Five time, goals. and that is all that matters. Absolutely. It's pretty to see young and old gathered here in UCD for Ireland's opening Keep game in Pool C. Fifth against sixth in the world. Nice long bounce. Scrum set, Muldoon feeds, Australia trying Stay to put seven, pressure seven. on, Malloy has use it at the now. back and now told to use it, Malloy to Muldoon, dummy runners on the side now, boom, it's cut open by Sharni Williams, what a hit that was by the centre, pick and go by Mary Louise Riley, Griffin has been everywhere since she's come into the game, she's fine, and then Australia dive on it and Hamilton looks to have stolen she was it, she tackler, she had all rights and she kicked the ball through the rack, good play, Australia surviving some pressure, can they get it out of their own 22, though? You just feel that Irish fitness levels at the moment are standing to them, and Australia look a little bit tired. Do they have something to break the line? That kick's not going to do justice. Hannah Tyrrell, Stapleton, two outsider, Considine calling for it. Considine with no support no, there. No. Tackled Stand by Tom Mari. Stay tuned, stay there. Still there, Griffin. Lost Tackled by Baker. Stapleton. Malloy. Naupu. Out to Maloney. Maloney on the far side to Miller. Alison Miller inside the 22. Big hit goes in from Ashley Houston. Big foot goal. To put her down and stop her in her tracks. Here is Riley once more. She takes a thumping tackle. Looks like an injury as well to one of the Australian players. After making that hit, Release goal. Rebecca Clough has to make the hit. Muldoon to O'Connor. Spence back inside to Baxter. Row five. Pete wrestling for it with Liz Patu. Onside, kept him. Kept. O'Connor. Desperate Australia defence, Ireland hammering at the line. The ball's available, she's having no effect. She's Pick had and no go effect. From O'Connor. Makes a half metre. Better defence this time from Hamilton, shoving Ireland back. And trying to counter Rook. They've got a blindside, Muldoon to Maloney. Onside, onside. Riley trying to dig one out, Australia. Oh, Making life as difficult as possible. Advantage being played to Ireland now. Four points the gap. A penalty would put seven between them, but they're not settling for three at the moment. They're pushing all the way for the try line. And they're almost there. Griffith, Griffith. Has one try already. Looking for a second. Muldoon to Spence. Sophie Spence for the corner. Is she dead? Nothing confirmed yet. The crowd think that she scored. Sophie Spence certainly See seems to believe that she got it Take down. Go We're going to go upstairs though, Mel. Can you give me a your good feeling on this one? Not to award I the try. I think she was initially Tim, held up. Is any reason not to award I the try? I don't know. That is correct. If momentum managed to get the ball on the line or on the try line, it's going to be very difficult to see it. The question is, any reason why 
I cannot award the try. Was there a double movement or did she get over here? Let's have a look. Did this ball get to ground just there? That's Is it down or is it held up? Inconclusive there. Uh, look, uh, you know, my instinct would tell me that that's gone over and that is a try. Did she get that ball down? You can't tell from there. It does look like on the balance of probability that she did score. Yeah, I think the team is probably going to say, you know, I haven't found a reason. Look for at you the not. knee. Look at the knee. I think of Baker underneath that ball. She's held that up there. Is that down there? Oh, right there. That's a try, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Initially held up. Momentum takes it over and down. Good strength. And of course, a number of Irish jerseys here to help her over. You may award the try. There you go. <laughs> try given. <laughs> Sophie Spence, the two substitutes from Tom Terry off the bench. First, Kira Griffin. And now, Sophie Spence from Belvedere in Dublin, crashing over, which makes it a two score game with 10 minutes to go. Yeah, that's Ireland's depth that they have off the bench and it's also a master stroke from the coach to have players like Spence ready and available to unleash. She's doing the job out there. And the Irish fans happy indeed. Nora Stapleton then to try and add the conversion from the corner. As difficult as it gets after a try, she struck it okay, it's gone to the left and wide. The flags stay down. This has been a battle. It's not over yet. But Australia know they need two scores to win this game. Nine points the gap. Converted try would leave two points behind. And they're running out of time here. As another substitute, Sarah Reardon comes in. And Hannah... Naha off the bench in place of Liz Patu. Will the fresh legs make a difference? No, Ireland have no, possession. No Stapleton. Griffin. Another carry from the back row forward. Malloy. It's taken back. Aupu, little spin and pirouettes out of danger. Tackle by Parry and then Parry allowed to play it. That's clever stuff by the Let's captain. Now chance here for through. Australia. Naha offloads. Australia inside the 22. Please. A try here would set up a, a grandstand finish with eight minutes remaining. Baker with a pop pass out to Butler. Looking for runners. Ireland having to defend. Here she comes again. Naha. Little offload to Shannon Parry. Baker once more. They're going to go wide this time. Pomari to Sharni Williams. Nice line of attack from Sarah Reardon. The substitute off the bench. Her first touch. Still there for Baker. Composure and Cam Hens needed for Australia. Up they go in the middle. Grace Hamilton's almost there. They scored the last time they were in this position. Can they get over from here? Ireland offside. Advantage play the try. Australia have struck back and this is not over yet Mel Robinson oh wow we. they just needed the pill didn't they Australia and finally they've got some possession from that very hard working prop Alicia Samoa once again that continuity play but it's the power players like Naha coming off the bench the ability to offload in the tackle Big and powerful, the hard-working Hamilton. Gee, how much work has she done today? And a lovely little pop. But there's three Irish players. No, four. And she still manages to get over. Now, Ashley Houston is the first choice goal kicker, as Mel said. But this is a, a big kick because this would leave two between them and a penalty or drop goal could potentially win it for Australia. It's got to go over. It has gone over. 19 points to 17. What a finish we have in store. Six minutes to play. You would not call this game. So exciting. This 
is the way to kick off day one of the 2017 Rugby World Cup. Strength and power, contrasting styles out there. What a storyline. Take a step, please. Ireland in front by two. Six minutes remaining in this Pool C opener. Taken by Reardon. She's been an impact substitution. Ireland trying to get their hands on it. There for Baker, though. And she feeds Rebecca Clough. Back with Baker. Parry. Straight into contact. Now Upu puts her down. No, green. Australia with possession. Ireland with the lead and the offload. Doesn't go to Hannah. Went backwards, though. Momentum again has shifted in this game. How many times have we said that? Chance to move this one wide now. Houston back inside to Sharni Williams. Lovely skill. And off goes Williams. Tackled by Malloy. Trying to stay on her feet. Use it. Baker. Blocked down. Ball's gone backwards. And then it's popped up for Malloy. It's gone forward. Advantage to Ireland. For the knock on. Griffin. Back in the pocket, Stapleton. Miller's out wide on her own here, and so too is Tyrrell. The pass from Fitzhenry. Tyrrell off the feet, so that's okay. Australia try and pounce on it. Where's that ball? Australia have it now. Warren to get a hand in there illegally, and it's a penalty. What a time to give away a penalty. Rocket form. What a game. Oh, wow, we. Australia on the attack, and then Ireland steal the ball, and then once again, tit for tat. The Aussies get it. Whew. Australia might be ruining the fact that they didn't have a goal kicker out there. That is certainly oh, crucial one. at this point oh, with them two points behind. Campbell goes to the front. So oh, it's an overthrow. What a time to do that. And Griffin comes away with it. What a moment. To lose the head for the hooker for Australia. On your feet, go! On your feet! Three and a half minutes to play. Stapleton oh. boots it as far as she possibly can. Trey Hearn is back there. Houston in support. Mahalia Murphy nowhere to go except straight into setting the who was waiting to make the tackle. Six, six, go. Three. Up the jumper from Chloe Butler. And then gets a little slip pass away. Needs to hit the ground. Campbell does well. Butler once more. And the try score, Samoa. Three minutes to play, two points the gap. Australia need to get down inside the Irish half. Ireland, at the moment, it's all about first-time tackles. Home support making their voices heard. Brilliant wraparound tackle by actually Baxter. But Australia come away with it. Any chance to go wide? Sharni Williams. Bit of pace and a little switch. It's gone into touch. And it's it, it, Who did it come off? Uh, I think that came off an Irish player. Options, scrum or a liner. Okay, Mel, it's your player of the match, touch. please. Yeah, play the liner, Rose. We've gone for somebody that we noticed, Marie liner. Louise Riley. She has been outstanding in the lineup. She's pinched a lot of the Australian ball. The work rate she's put out there, she's made it to so many breakdowns. She has been absolutely fantastic. 11 tackles as well. And Mary Louise Riley, or Maz as she's known, is the Aon player of the match. We still have time to play, and she could yet be on a losing side. It looks like an Irish possession. And here we see an example of those long arms getting up to steal the ball. Well, she's 1 metre 92, so they're very long. It's been a real Five war this game. Line Five line-out steals. Two balls on her own throw as well. But Time the damage that she's done when Australia have her possession has been notable, and equally the workaround rook time and in the malls directing things and directing traffic. It's all about maintaining and holding possession for Ireland, right? Let's go, Ireland. Time's on. Just a couple of minutes to go. Hold on, nice
crucial to win the line out here. It's Malloy, the captain, who gets up. Two minutes to play. Australia try and put a shove on Ireland, keeping it tight, as you would expect. Nothing silly. And see out the game for a precious opening victory in Pool C. Murphy came across to make the tackle and then a bit of a mix up in the middle. It went backwards and it's okay. But then it's over. Shardy Williams has won the ball. Shardy Williams over the top and then Ireland get just enough numbers there. Ireland carry over the halfway line. Spence picks up off the deck, tries the handoff, put on her back, eventually by Chloe Butler. Ireland with a minute to see this one out. O'Connor into contact, the substitute tight head. Has more than made amends for that early penalty, which led to the Australia try. It'll switch with Maloney and Spence. Spence trying to keep holding that ball. Again, Ireland keeping it tight. They know three more carries should do it. Malloy trying to stay on her feet. Baker, is she holding her up now? Eventually it's gone down. 30 seconds to play. O'Connor into contact. No last minute mistakes. And Ireland will have their first win of the World Cup 2017. Drama at its best all the way through this match. Tip for chat from both teams who've given everything in the opening game. It hasn't been faultless by either side, but it's been full of passion, guts, and the glory it looks like. We're going to Ireland. We've got 80 minutes. If Muldoon puts it out, if Stapleton puts it out, Ireland have beaten Australia, and they'll have their opening win. Drama. The Briggs can't even look. They've had to fight and scrap for this win, but they've done it. They've beaten Australia in their pool C opener, Mel Robinson. That game had everything we could have asked for. It was close. Australia turned out, played brilliantly. But in the end, Ireland and their pat and their impact off the bench, the fact that they had numbers at every breakdown, their smart rugby heads at the end to absorb the time, kick it out in the right moment. They've rewarded their very loyal crowd packing out this stadium with a magnificent win. A tough game, but one that will probably help them as this tournament progresses. Three tries in total for Ireland. President Michael D. Higgins, a happy man. Bill Bowman behind him, been treated to as exciting a match as you can expect to get in the pool stages of this competition. And in truth, you look to the substitutions that Tom Tierney, the Ireland coach, made in the second half. Sophie Spence off the bench for a try. Kira Griffin off the bench for a try. And then, with Australia hammering away at the end, it was Ireland who held their composure, kept cool heads, and managed to see it out for victory in this dramatic, dramatic Pool C opener. So, Neve Briggs, I'm sure she'd love to be out there, but second best is watching her team get the victory against Australia. Perhaps they may be underestimated among Irish rugby circles given their defeats over the summer, but I tell you, Australia came here to play and Ireland had to fight hard for that victory. Australia fans applaud the efforts of their team as well. They've travelled a long way to be here, some of them. Obviously, Aussies living in Ireland as well. But I think after that we can catch a breath and we can go down and hear from the Irish captain, open side Claire Malloy. She's talking to Jenny. Well, Claire, what an unbelievable match. What a gutsy, brave match. And I don't think there's anyone more relieved than obviously you and their players than Neve Gregg herself. How, how are you feeling? Uh, that was a tough match. Um, the Australians really put us to it. We knew they were going to be a physical side. I'm just really proud of the grit our girls showed. You know, we were under the cosh a bit in the start of the second half, and then we really rose our game. You know, we won those collisions and got those tries at the end. Um, it's an exciting start to the tournament, and one from one. Absolutely. I mean, down in the second half there, and 
you're, you're playing at home in front of a home crowd. There's a lot of pressure, but you guys dealt with it so brilliantly. How did you come back from that? I think I'm just the resilience of the girls and the resolve that we knew if we just held in there that we would generate that possession, we would get up into their half and we create those scoring opportunities. Absolutely. And obviously two subs in the in the second half, two tries, a try from each of them. How much does that show the depth of the Irish bench? It's fantastic, you know, we're one of 28 every time we step onto that pitch and, you know, our bench um, and the players and the non-playing reserves are the girls who are going to win this tournament for us. Well, how emotional is it for you guys in, in front of this home crowd and, and how much 